Hilda. What on earth are you doing? You don't sound very thrilled to see me. Well, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm, it's not often a young girl comes down the chimney into one's bedroom. And... Doesn't one? I wouldn't know. So I'm a bit sooty. How long have you been hiding up there? I wasn't hiding. I've come straight down. You came all the way down the chimney? Yes. Came over the roof. You're crazy. That's a tremendous height. I'm not afraid of heights, as you know. Will you excuse me if I wash? Well, I, yes. Thank you. Uh, actually, I'm not used to undressing with a man in the room. Oh, no, that's all right. I, I won't look. Matilda's visit to my room was the culmination of an extraordinary day. That afternoon with her sister, Belinda. Jasper, would you like to worship Aphrodite? And the previous night with her other sister, Chloe. Such a comfort. What else could equal such marvelous moments for a man? <laughs> Except making the winning hit in a vital cricket match. I was in paradise, so why wasn't I utterly happy? You are going to recommend closure of the statistical unit, aren't you? Oh, I don't like being threatened, Mark. It isn't a threat, Jasper. I'm just saying that if you do recommend closure, it'll help your career. If you don't, who knows? This was a decision I wasn't going to be able to avoid much longer. You can look now. Could I sit on the end of the bed? Oh, well, your pyjamas are a bit sooty. I, I'm not sure what Miss Mousy would think if she saw soot all over the blankets. Should I take them off? No, put, put my shirt on the bed and sit on that. It, it's got to go to the laundry anyway. What happens next? Well, I could give you a good night kiss and hold the door open for you. I suppose it amuses you to play with me like this. Why have you come here? But you remember I told you I wasn't sexy, not like Belinda. Yes, I remember. Well, I've been thinking, and I've come to the conclusion that I was wrong. I think I am a bit sexy after all. Well, that's not very surprising. So, I thought I'd better find out what it all entails. What happens now? That, my dear Matilda, is a very weighty question. Would it help to solve it if I got into bed with you? It might solve it in one way, but I'm not sure it's a very good idea, because... I'm tired and sleepy. I've made an awful mistake, haven't I? Come here and let me kiss you. I'm not too tired and sleepy for that. <laughs> tired and sleepy and uh, tomorrow's another day. It wasn't a total mistake, was it? Dear Matilda, it wasn't a mistake at all. Pie. Did you sleep well? Uh, very well, eventually, Professor. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Quirk. What a lovely day. Uh, Professor, 
I know we agreed that we wouldn't discuss the future of the statistical unit until after the fate. It's just as well we did. There's so much to do. However... I must get up to the green and supervise the men with the marquee. Have you remembered those bulls, Quirk? And the pig? Yes, Prof. The pig's laid on. Oh, good. Oh, good. But I was wondering... Don't forget to check up on Belinda's fireworks. Don't leave it all to her. Yes, Prof. I've got everything under control. Oh, good. So, um, would it be a good idea if this morning, Professor, I look through all your files and all the current foreign publications, etc., etc.? Don't forget the foil for slicing the ham, Quirk. And put it in the back of the tent where the children can't touch it. It's all in hand. I'll see you later then, Mr. Pye. Yes. We'll see you later, Mr. Pye. It was good to have a little chat with you. Ah! Ah, thank you, Miss Mansi. Miss Mounsey, um, this morning, I, I'd like to rummage through all your files. I like your suit, Mr. Pye. And to, to find out all the, um... Oh, do you? Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, I thought I should look reasonably smart if I'm going to give away all the prizes and everything. And, 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 and to find out all the facts I need in order to make a decision about the future of the unit on an informed basis. I like the tie, too. Uh, but... I need to look at the work of the statistical unit in detail. Well, it's a little difficult when the professor and Mr. Quirk aren't here, Mr. Pye. I think it's a little more difficult when they are here, Miss Mansi, because they're so very rarely here. Well, you wouldn't expect me to comment on that. Well, Miss Mansi, I put it to you that the professor is so busy with the history and tradition of Arcady and its grounds, and Mr. Quirk is so tied up with his cricket pitch that the vast bulk of the statistical work falls on your shoulders. You wouldn't expect me to comment on that, Mr. Pye. Well, no, you're right. I mean, it's not fair. I, they are the people I should be putting on the spot, not you. I, I'm sorry. All right, very well. If you just show me where you keep all your foreign publications and, and all your statistical records, I will just sit here and, 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 and quietly... Whatever's wrong, Miss Mansi? I know I shouldn't have. But it all seemed so stupid. It's such a waste of time and, and money. What, what are you trying to tell me? There are no foreign publications, Mr. Pye. What? You mean... Yes. I began by making up the odd statistic here and there when the magazines didn't arrive or came late, and then I realised how much easier it would all be if, if I'd just made them all up. You mean you... You mean you... You, you of all people? I mean, you made up all the statistics of a government department? Well, Arkady makes people do things they wouldn't do elsewhere, Mr. Pye. Well, yes. I mean, yes. But, but you? And, and no magazines? And uh, all that public money? I mean, do the professor and Mr. Quirk know that your statistics are all false? Well, they never mention it, but I'm sure they do. Oh, Mr. Pye, I feel so guilty. I can't sleep at night sometimes. Imagine if British foreign policy were being changed because of my false information. Well, no, no, I can set your mind at rest about that. Nobody has ever taken any notice of your statistics at all. Oh, Mr. Pye! Oh, I can't tell you how happy it makes me to hear you say that. So, uh, no harm has been done, really. So, um, couldn't... couldn't we just go on as we are? I mean, need, need anybody ever know? Don't you think there's more to your life than making up statistics that nobody reads? No, look, much as I would like to, and much as I don't like threats, I'm going to have to recommend that the unit is closed down. When will this happen? I think the word I'm going to have to use in my report is, uh, forthwith. Such a pity. Just got the wicket right at last. Good for lots of runs, but gives the bowler a chance. I, I'm sure you'll be given plenty of time to clear up and 
make arrangements for the future. For the future? Oh, you mustn't think, Mr. Pye, that I'm worrying about myself. No, it's the prof I'm worrying about. I think you must be told straight away. I don't think he wants to be told anything until after the fate. Oh, it's different now. It would be a blow to his pride if he was kept in the dark now that Mr. Quirk and I know. Come, Pye. We'll face the bowling together. This will be a big blow to him. And this place means everything to him, Pi. It's his life, his passion. Hasn't he got a home to go to in Scotland? The prof was born in Glasgow, in the Gorbals. He told me that himself in a rare, expansive moment years ago. When he was still a boy, he went to live on his uncle's croft. His uncle died some years ago. I don't think there's any way he could call his home. Well, couldn't he go back to his university and take up some post there? The prof doesn't know I know this, and I've never told anyone else. But he isn't really a professor at all. What? He was just a clerk in the estate's bursar's office at Aberdeen University. At one term, shortly after the outbreak of war, he lent a hand marking examination papers when one of the lecturers was called up. That is the sum total of the prof's university career. I ask you on your word of honour never to reveal a word of this to anyone, least of all to the prof himself. Of course, I give you my word, but I... What will he do? I just can't think. Oh, hell. Hello there, you two. Uh, what are you two nattering about? Cricket, I suppose. No, prof, we were talking about something more serious than cricket. More serious than cricket, Quirk? Surely there can't be anything more serious than cricket. Well, yes, sir, actually there is. Mr. Pye has just been telling me... We've got our marching orders. Got to shut up shop. Innings declared. Uh, what is it, Pye? Can you elucidate Quirk's sequence of mixed metaphors? I was sent here in the hope that I would recommend that the statistical unit be closed down forthwith. I hoped that I would find reasons why it should remain open. I found none. Of course you haven't. How could you? If you had been in Arcady a bit longer, that might not have mattered to you, but I cannot criticize you. I assume you will also be notifying Lord Flamborough. He's expecting you to lunch before the fate. I shall be busy up here, and uh, I find myself a wee bit unnerved. I'll tell Lord Flamborough at lunch. You're most considerate, Pye. Now, Quirk, go and put up that bunting and look out the flags of all nations. They're in the croquet box in the pavilion. We must have the place looking gay and uh, festive. Jasper, didn't expect you so soon. Oh, well, no, sir. Uh, I need to speak to you about something, and uh, I understand I'm invited for lunch. That's it, my boy. We've got to fortify you for the fiesta of fallen women. <laughs> I look forward to your speech. No doubt you've prepared some trenchant observations on shameful bundles, eh? the harlot with the heart of gold. The call girl menace in Flaxfield. <laughs> yeah, it's Flaxfield. We're off to now. I promised to pick up Ozzie Tipton. Oh, who's Ozzie Tipton? You don't know Ozzie Tipton. Ozzie Tipton and his stompers. They play on the pier at Lowestoft. Quite a lively little jazz band. They promised to come over here and put on a show for an hour or so at the fate. I've been through all these shrub catalogues, Jasper, and I can't find either of those roses you mentioned yesterday, Fruticosa or Mancuniensis. They must be extremely uncommon. Uh, yes, they are extremely uncommon. Yes, I'll try and find them when I get back to London. Oh, when are you going back to London? I thought you were staying for some time. 
There are lots of things I want to ask you about the herbaceous border. Well, uh, my job's done here, really, and I ought to get back to work. Uh, I thought I'd leave for London tonight. Tonight? But it's bank holiday Monday. There's only one train. It leaves at 6.48. You can't go on that. You'll miss the dance. And I particularly wanted you to give a demonstration of the Charleston. You can't miss my fireworks, darling. I've got Roman candles, Catherine wheels, tourbillon, Chinese fire fountains, all specially in your honour. Oh, well. Uh, perhaps I could get the early train in the morning. As, as I said, Lord Thamber, I, I came to see you about something rather important. Um, privately. Privately? <laughs> Spit it out, dear boy. I must get lunch. Come and lend a hand, Belinda. Wasn't that tactful? I suppose she guessed what you wanted to talk to me about. It's Belinda, I suppose. You want to marry her? Oh, that's all right, dear boy. You don't have to plead your case. I know we Verleys have a tradition of not marrying out of the family, but it, it's, a, it's a good idea to introduce new blood you know, now and then. No, I wasn't actually going to ask you anything about Lady Belinda. It's not Matilda, surely. She's rather young. No, sir, I'm afraid I'm not actually planning to marry any of your daughters. It's, um... It's about the hall. But I live entirely on the train. The hall's got nothing to do with me. That's the professor's responsibility. Well, the professor himself asked me to speak to you, sir. The fact is... I'm going to have to recommend the disbanding of the statistical unit. The Ministry will be discontinuing its tenancy of the hall. What will happen to the prof? And Quirk? I'm afraid they'll be going. But you can't do that. The prof's been here for 17 years. I know, but he and his unit are now considered redundant. Redundant? What the devil does that mean? Oh, uh, not wanted anymore. Well, I want him. Suits me very well to have him here. He's invaluable. But unfortunately, the Treasury is paying for him to head a statistical unit, sir. Not run your house and gardens. The treasury, indeed. What does the Treasury know about it? Who runs the Treasury, anyway, hmm? Chancellor of the Exchequer, I suppose. Who's he? That fellow was at Eton with me, eh? Or was it a perishing Wickhamist. I can't say for certain, sir, but I think he was at Harrow. Harrow? Oh, my God. That's the end. I'll, I'll go to the House of Lords. I, I haven't been there since the last coronation, but I'll go. I'll raise the matter in the House. I'm extremely sorry. Cut the apologies. Oh, I, I'm not blaming you. You're only doing your job. Let's forget the whole thing. I don't want to have my bank holiday buckered up by a bloody Herovian. Let's have a record. Beautiful. It's such a pity that a wonderful house like that should be home to a dreary old government statistical unit. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Quirk. I didn't see you there. Of course, a statistical unit isn't really dreary. It's just that it doesn't seem quite suitable for Arkley Hall. Well, don't worry, Miss Tidy. The dreary old statistical unit won't be here much longer. We're being disbanded. Well, that's really sad. Hello there. Ozzie Tipton. Pleased to meet you, Earl. Oh. Jimmy, meet the Earl of Flanders. Hey! This is fabulous. Jimmy. And this is Jake. Hiya, Jake. Now, Jimmy and Jake are all we could pick out of the sand today. The rest of the boys are paddling. <laughs> it's very decent of you to come at all. 
This is Jasper. Jasper Pie. Hello, Jasper. Hello. Uh, could you fix a drink or a parch? Of course. <laughs> Now, what are you all going to have? <laughs> you just leave it to me. I'll fix you all up. <laughs> I agree with Jake. Uh, Since he broke away from Count Basie, Lester Young has not been the saxophonist he used to be. <laughs> what do you think of Charlie Parker? Charlie Parker is fabulous. Charlie Parker? Charlie Parker was a modernist. He didn't restrict himself to elemental forms like the blues or tunes that move in the conventional pattern of revolving sevenths. Mm. Nice little place you've got here, Earl. Quite a gimmick, eh? I don't really know what a gimmick is, but... What's your opinion of Duke Ellington? The Duke is fabulous. Really? Ellington is musically a schizo. Working on the basic jazz structure, he has created a synthesis of neo-negro technique and a tone poetry that derives from Ravel or Delius rather than the folk music. Lord Flamborough thought these twerps were fabulous. Luncheon is ready. Fabulous. Uh, Jasper, would you mind giving Chloe a hand on the footplate? Come through and eat, the rest of you. I've been sent to help, but I don't know what to do. Never mind, darling. You only have to do the firing. And it's nice to have you with me. Why aren't you at lunch? It seems to have developed into a university extension lecture on jazz. Ozzy Watmet and the Stompers. Only two of his stompers, actually. That's quite enough. <laughs> Never mind, darling. If you pull down on that whistle cord, you can make more noise than all Ozzy Watmet stompers put together. Have a piece of bread and cheese to keep you going. Oh, yes, thanks. Chloe. I had to tell the statistics team that their unit's been disbanded. They aren't at all happy, and nor in Lord and Lady Flamborough. So that's why you escaped to the footplate. I suppose you found it all a bit embarrassing. Poor Jasper, I'm wretched for you. That'll do, Jasper, darling. The footplate regulations don't allow for kissing the engine driver. Now, take that oil can and go and fill the pots. What pots? The little boxes on the side of the engine. go along, you must keep an eye on the gauge glasses to make sure the water level's right in the boiler. Let me know if it falls below the mark. And watch the pressure gauge, too. Good. Now lean out and watch the flag. Hello there! Let's go! Take it away! No need to move your feet at all. Just keep your left hand up and swing with your body. It's all in the stance. You're a cricketer. It ought to come easy to you. Broccoli. Fabulous. This is some stuff. The boys on the beach don't know what they're missing. This is fun, isn't it? Oh, yes, great fun.
You'll make a fireman yet. Thank you for the compliment. Are you really leaving us for good tomorrow? Afraid so. I'll miss you. It's been fun having you. Perhaps, after all, you might be allowed to kiss the engine driver goodbye. It's not allowed for in the footplate regulations. That was certainly a swell ride you gave. Is it in order for me to tip the final? It isn't allowed for in the footplate regulations. OK. Well, that saved me half a dollar. All right, follow me, chaps. Say there, Antique. This may be the very pair of tongs King Alfred was using when he burnt the cakes. Yours for five and eleven pence, lady. That's it. <laughs> Tarlots. Good day, Sir Jasper. I hear you are presenting the prizes. Not much doubt which is the handsomest engine in the field, eh? Allow me to accompany you to the beer tent and buy you a drop of scotch. Uh, come on. Uh... Jasper, come in, dear boy. <laughs> How are you, you old rogue? <laughs> Three triple scotch, please, Dimple. No whiskey for me. Half a pint of bitter, Dimple, please. Not a drop of spirits passes my lips. Not till Susie's been put through her paces. Suffering snakes. Dimple, fetch Mr. Lionel out of pig's ear. Hi. Thank heaven I found you. Have you forgotten you're judging the ankle competition? It's due to start. Please, drink up, my boy, and come along with me. Right. Uh, oh, look, I really don't want any more of this. I, I can't manage a treble scotch in the middle of the afternoon. I... <laughs> They're all lined up. No! My rate went out yet! <laughs> Sir Jasper, I want you to meet my rate there. <laughs> I expect you've seen her picture in the papers. She and Miss Felix saw you for last. Oh! <laughs> She's got lovely ankles, hasn't she? <laughs> and they winsome. <laughs> and Rita always paints her tongue nails gold. <laughs> Very stylish, my Rita is, aren't you? Will you get behind the screen immediately? Please. Now, ladies, have your right foot forward under the screen, and the judging will begin. Um, uh, the winner is... Number eight! You mean number 12, don't you? Let's read this number. Number eight. Come forward. Number eight. Yay! Number 12. She was very strong. You can't avoid her. Miss Bronte. Well, at last you've noticed something about me, Mr. Pye. It's a disgrace. It should have been number 12. I'm going to complain. My waiter was Miss Felix Tom. What was this woman ever? Nothing. My waiter's got the daintiest ankles in East Anglia. You should have heard what Gilbert Hardy said about them.
Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's sorry, Miss Mansi. I'm... Oh, my goodness, Mr. Fair, you are filthy. Give me your jacket and tie, and I'll try and clean it. Really? Yes, of course. And I'll um, try and get you a clean shirt as well. Oh, oh Miss Mansi. Yes, Mr. Fair? This is really very kind of you. His fault. I saw Charlie Hasbro pour whiskey into his beer. Number 100 is Messi, Susie, and by Lionel Verley. I can only allow one more minute for Susie to get to our mark. Has anybody here seen Susie? <laughs> Good to see you, but listen. This is not Lionel's fault. He was only on Harps of Bitter and Charlie Aspel spiked them with whiskey. On your mark. Get set. Get set. Go. Go. to be held at Arkady in aid of the fallen women. It seems that the charming creatures still continue to fall. <laughs> so I suppose there'll be several hundred more fates in Arkady before we have finished. But alas, we should not have with us to organize them and keep all you unruly people in order. <laughs> Our very dear friend, Professor Pollock. Those dumb clucks at the Treasury have decided the nation can dispense with him. 
All of us know what a ghastly mistake they're making, but there's nothing we can do about it. Except to thank him from the bottom of our hearts. It is now my pleasure to call upon our distinguished guest, Sir Jasper Pye, who will present the prizes. Thank you. And now we come to the final two prizes of the afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. The uh, Hadfield Shield and the red ribbon in the Concours d'Elegance for Pride of Flaxfield to Mr. Charlie Aspel. A happy high hand. <laughs> uh, last, but definitely not least, the winner of the Traction Engine's musical chairs, Mr. Lionel Verley. Good old Susie. <laughs> Second best girl in the world. This trophy really belongs to the best girl in the world. My wife, Chloe. <laughs> I'm now going to call on our dear friend, Miss Tidy, who many of you remember as the daughter of the late Canon Tidy, to say a few words. Miss Tidy? of the statistical unit need not be a sad day for Arcady Hall. I have not been visiting it purely for social reasons. I have been examining it for my employers, the National Trust. It has always been our hope that one day it might become available for purchase. Now that the statistical unit is to be closed, there is no obstacle to our purchase. Lord and Lady Flamborough can continue to live on their train. Their magnificent home will become a national treasure. And I'm delighted to say that Mr. Quirk has kindly consented to stay on as caretaker and groundsman. <laughs> Good luck, Arcady Hall. I would like to thank Sir Jasper in a very public way. He's one of the few people of his generation who really understands how to dance the Charleston. I'm going to ask him to be so good as to give a demonstration now to music provided by Ozzy Tipton. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Oh, 
What are you doing here? I was waiting for you. How do you know I come here? I lead a life of the spirit. I have second sight. I don't suppose you know what I'm going to say to you now. Yes, I do. You're going to tell me you're going away forever. How did you know? Right, aren't I? Well, what would I do here? I don't belong here. Aren't you going to give me something to remember you by? Getting it already. That won't last very long either. Aren't you going to take me? I care about you far, far too much for that. <laughs> I have to go, Matilda. <laughs> Goodbye, Jasper. I apologize for that unfortunate outburst. The fact is, I made a silly mistake. I thought I was in love with you. Now I realize I was wrong. Find you rather a bore. Jasper is a bore. intermission for refreshments. <laughs> Which would you like to kiss most? Lips, cheeks, ears or eyes? You are fabulous. <laughs> Thank you for telling me what Charlie Askell had done. And there was me half thinking you fancied your chances with Chloe. Delighted to be proved wrong, dear boy. We're going to make a go of it. Well, I wish you both the best of luck. Lester Young is the grand old man of tenor saxophone playing. In his heyday, he had quicksilver technique. He's a master still, though musically he's living on his investments. There isn't the tension, the zip. As an executant, he's been bypassed by the chromatic progressions of Charlie Parker and his contemporaries. You could give me something nobody's ever given me before. Would you care for a walk? At last! I thought it was only a matter of time. What are you doing, Professor? The Lady Flamborough persuaded Miss Tidy to give me a job as head gardener. And the Professor loves the place so much that he sacrificed his distinguished academic career. Really? I can imagine how much of a sacrifice that was, Professor. So your painful decision has turned out for the best for everyone after all, except perhaps for you two. Presumably, you will return to your minor civil service post, Pi. But what of you, Miss Mouncy? Well, I expect I shall be offered some unexciting posting somewhere in the civil service, Professor. 
But are you not going to come to the dance? Well, we must just finish this weeding. The weather may break at any moment. Do you think so? Oh, don't forget to tell me where I can find that rose you recommended. The Fruticosa. A hybrid of Mancuniensis. Do you think it was only a matter of time? I, I hope so. You're the only person who's never called me Mouse. Will you go tomorrow? I suppose so. I'm a civil servant. Well, so am I. I'm also a bore. A bore? Yes, a bore. <laughs> I don't find you a bore. don't find me a bore. <laughs> <laughs> 